Okay, morning everyone. Welcome to day four of week 11 of the Guildford City Fitness live stream. Make sure your warm up area is clear and you've got a drink. And we're going to start the session with two minutes of breaststroke skipping. In three, two, one, go. And a reminder that this, these are star jumps, but if you have a rope, you can do breaststroke, uh, breaststroke skipping. Mainly so you don't forget how to do it. Uh, so we've got Noah, Caroline, and Tegan. How are you doing, guys? Uh, Millie says morning. How's it going, Millie? Morning from Cam, Alex Pearl, Ollie, Charlie, Chris. Hope you're all feeling lively today, people. Michelle, Ben, and James. Okay, stop. And morning from Sam. Break one more round. Two, one, go. At least it wasn't unbearably hot last night. Yeah. Uh, Matt T. Mr. Taylor, how's it going? It's gonna be like me hitting the floor. Yeah. Uh, we've got Elizabeth. How's it going, Elizabeth? And stop. Compass point lunge. So forward, sideways, backwards. And you're gonna go twice on each leg. And you in. Throw in a diagonal. If you go diagonal and just switch sides, so go one on one leg, so forward like normal. See much. Should we get pretty good at these by now? Three for leg. Ugh. I mean, for sure, I learned these way before I was at Guildford, but I could never do them. And see much. It's as slow as you can. So you have to emphasize more core control. Just turn your foot as far to the side as you can. Then lift it up without leaning. And reverse each rep as well. Then you've got wall to streamline, scat press and star jump. So six of those, and then I've just spread it, but scat press. Spine up as high as you can, hands through the floor. And breathe out as you push. And then start up to finish.
So I always make sure I've done at least one before I go into a uh, repeated series. Don't want to tear anything. Right. So Thursday session as always starts off with some static core control work. So you have shoulder taps, straight arm left plank, press up plank with leg sweep, straight arm right plank, and then over under. Where is my cushion arm? Under the city. Would have been very uncomfortable otherwise. So in case you've forgotten, press up leg sweep, press up plank leg sweep, hold this position. Legs up and out to the side, and then over under, on your back, shoulders up, legs go out as wide as you can, cross them over and squeeze in the middle, like that. So we'll start off with shoulder taps in three, two, one, go. Press your hand down into the floor. Whenever you come up with a single arm. Or start building in uh, press up plank marches as well. So foot, then hand. And relax. Straight left arm plank. In two, one, go. So push your hand down hard, lift your hips up, pull on your, your belt buckle if it helps, or the tags on the side of your shorts. Wherever you've got it just helps re-emphasize what's supposed to be working. Then try and push your feet down. Okay, last 10 seconds. So then press up plank with leg sweep. To start small, just tap up to the side. Two, one, go. So it's almost like a superset here. Because of these ones, you're working the muscles on the outside of your hip. Then the overrunners are going to emphasize the ones on the inside. If you want to challenge yourself, try and bring your leg even further out to the side for the last 10 seconds. Just make sure that your hips stay level as you go through and then relax. Move into right arm side plank. Keep it straight if you can. Two, one, go. If you've been doing them with cross feet, try to increase the challenge, stacking them on top of each other. Ultimately, it's about how much work your trunk does, though. So if you start trying to stack them, and you worry more about wobbling, stick with that for now. And relax. Finish off the round with over-unders. Three, two, one, go. So as long as your lower back, then we're pretty much doing at least one exercise a day where the emphasis is on your lower back staying pressed into the ground. Over-unders. So the further you move away, and the slower you can make that movement, the more work your lower abs are going to do. And then the more effective your stabilizing muscles will get. Relax. So the legs, are, the muscles that control leg movement. So that should be your priority. Twenty second break. And then back into shoulder taps. Okay, shoulder taps. In two, one, go.
So it is significantly easier if you genuinely press down the bottom of the sheet. So it's almost like finishing a single arm press up. Relax into the left arm plank. Two, one, go. If you start to struggle, your elbow starts to shake uncontrollably. Choices are have a mini break and go again. But if the tremor comes back, just transition into a regular forearm side plank and then relax. A press up plank the side side sweep. Two, one, go. If you're not quite ready yet to start building up that range of motion, spend more time with one foot off the ground. Or better yet, don't touch the floor. Sweep out to the side, bring your foot back in. Last 10 seconds. Get down, relax. Into right arm side plank. In two, one, go. So always make sure, even if you have to rest, you might find drifting backwards makes it easier. It's better to keep your arm stacked properly and then take those mini breaks. So if you can get 10 seconds on, go back in. I'll help you develop that strength endurance far more effectively. To the last few seconds and stop. Finish off round two then with over unders in two, one, go. If it starts to bother your hip flexors, for anyone that's had hip, hip injuries, just work in those mini breaks. You should be emphasizing as much work below your belly button as you are uh, on your groin. And relax. So back into shoulder taps. Over unders, it's really easy to forget about this part you just start switching your legs over in the air you might find that you relax there so just keep that locked down the whole time and then we're gonna go shoulder taps in three two one go these easier but keep the focus just do less taps but stay in that press up plank position relax for some reason I find it easier to do a single arm hold than to keep switching over but just do what you can into left arm side plank in two one go Keep your shoulders stacked on top of your wrist and try and keep yourself facing forward so you're controlling your neck position. I keep breaking that myself because I'm looking at the clock. And stop. 
press a plank, press a plank leg sweep. Okay, whenever you're doing side plank, just try and stay facing forward the whole time. Two, one, go. If you can, control your breath so that you're holding your core as you tap your foot out and then re-breathe in the middle. So breathe in to start. And then relax into right arm side plank. Two, one, go. I have to crick my neck and my side. Just even when you get tired, focus on pushing. So instead of thinking about time, give your body a deliberate task to do. So whether it's pushing your feet down, lifting your hips up. Last couple of seconds. Then relax. Finish off part one with over unders. In two, one, go. So after every three, just readjust your stomach. It might mean you have to bring your legs closer. So even here, I can still feel a lot of work being done around. The top of my leg, that's also burning up my lower abs because <laughs> I'm trying to keep my pelvis steady and stop. So, one minute break <coughs> into lower body strength. Same exercises as last week, but with a chair because you're going to add in hamstring raise. So, your choices are. You can stick with rear for elevated squat, so you can go hamstring raise into these, or you can go with roller squats. So this is my way of trying to build up into doing single leg proper, like proper single leg squats. So you've got one knee, one foot in front of the other, toes up on a roller, at the start, you can get lower down to the ground. And because your toes are up rather than pointing down, it makes it harder to use your back leg. Let's give that a try. So people that can do pistol squats or have seen pistol squats, I'm trying to develop that kind of coordination and strength at a, uh, a strange range of motion. So wall sits in three, two, one, go. Still sticking with 35 on, 10 off. That should feel a little bit easier than normal. And relax. Okay, then you're into roller well, squat, right leg in two. One, go. So like I said, if you haven't got a foam roller, just do rear foot elevated squat, like you have been doing. That's the wrong foot. If you're doing this for the first time, just focus on finding that lower body position for today. So you want to find a, a setup that lets you stay very tall. Bend that leg a lot. So relax and switch legs to the other side. In two, one, go. So if you imagine trying to do a proper single leg squat, 
basically I haven't got the range to be able to do it without the foam roller, but you want to be able to single leg squat all the way down and push. It takes a lot of stability at your hip and a lot of strength to be able to push from a very crouched position. So down here, without falling over. Relax. And hamstring raise. If you feel like you can't push very well, that's literally the entire point of the exercise. You're going to develop that skill. Two, one, go. So you can go half and half single leg, or even with double leg. Morning, a bit late. Uh, a bit later this morning, sorry, from David Hammond. Well, that's hammer time. It's 20 past seven. And swap over. Okay, a little bit biased, so I'll do more on the other leg next time. Relax. And then split jumps to finish off. In two, one, go. The same as usual, jump as high as you possibly can. Concentrate on your setup. And your movement time as well. Last few seconds. And relax. 20 seconds off, back to the start. Three, two, one, go. As you're doing your wall sit, make sure your lower back stays completely pushed into the, the wall or the door. And it's easy to think about your quads. Have to get your stomach, so keep it pulled down. Even if your wall, your back is flush to the wall, still try and concentrate keeping your core tight. And then relax into roller squat. Three, two, one, go. So having messed around with it, the roller squats aren't gonna feel as tiring but they're gonna mess up your jumps a lot more. Because of that, like, that true single leg effort. So we're trying to go from not to 100. Still cannot do it without the roller, relax. But I will eventually. If you want to try it without the roller, be my guest. For me, it's more of a mobility thing. Two, one, go. So that's what you're trying to say. Upright. If you find that the roller goes too far up your shin, just try and start with that a little bit further back. and try and stay tall. You might find that you can do it quite well if you lean, because more of your weight's over the middle of your uh, center of balance. So it's gonna help you develop that ability to push, relax. If you sit more upright and coil your, your leg up more, those pushes are gonna get more effective. You can hamstring raise, two, one, go. Although I went a bit imbalanced with my time on the last one. Let's swap over now. If you're doing 
if you manage to keep an eye on the clock. No, I did like 20 and 15. So now I'm going to swap. Just make sure all the work comes from above uh, in line with your pocket. Stop. Okay, then split jumps. Two, one, go. So if you're doing roller squats or uh, single leg squat jump, uh, squats, don't worry so much if you feel like your jumps feel kind of weak. Just go, stop doing them from the ground with a pause. Go into a cat movement. Keep doing them from a split. Relax. So the hardest thing with jump training is you get comfortable with a certain position. So for me, it's definitely not that low. But you want to keep pushing different ranges of motion in different positions so that you improve your ability to push. Because if you get good at a lot of them, it'll improve your main one. Wall sits in two, one, go. Thing is, it's there if you want a bit of extra challenge. Squeeze the foam roller while you're doing this. It's a bit of a distraction, but it's also a bit of extra groin work. Three, two, one, relax. At least that's nearby for the roller squats. So, two, one, Go. We do it facing this way. So if you do it too close, the roller might it might be painful because the roller ends up mid shin. Just push the roller back a little bit. And concentrate on pushing that front leg down through the floor. Think you can try and do a single leg squat proper all the way to the ground. Oh, it's just not there. Relax, swap over. So I ideally want to be at a point where I can get down to this position, put the floor and then push. Two, one, go. Oh. Genuinely, the hardest part is not pushing your foot into the roller. It's quite simple. If you push and roll at the same time, if you rest completely, and just push using that front leg, becomes a lot more challenging. Stop. And then split squats to finish. So that's where it's going to feel a lot easier. If you do a counter movement because you've got momentum behind you. Two, one, go. Just so make sure every time you jump, you absorb that landing properly. So flat feet, slight lean, soft knees. If you want to finish off, you can go with normal ones and relax. All right, session done. So, genuinely, seriously, try those single leg squats with the pause. Pistols are fine, they're, like, they're very impressive, but they involve a lot of spinal flexion and leaning forward. Whereas a proper single leg like this, but with your foot off the floor. I can't even demo it, that's what this is here for. That takes a lot of coordination and strength. 
which is what you're going to develop a lot more than doing more reps or slower reps in this position. So try and find a way to build that in. Even if it's just a couple of books on the floor, it gives you a starting point and just really concentrate on pushing, squeezing through your hips on the lead leg. So, onto static stretching today. So grab and put that out of the way. Grab a drink and then do right quad, left hamstring. Two, one, go. It's Thursday, so I've got some gym bits to go over as well today. It's 30 seconds, make sure there's no pinch on the very tip top of your knee. So I'm definitely getting somewhere because that's com completely in the middle. And then relax, so lean forward a bit, shuffle your left heel forward. And then we're going to throw in right hip as well. So from this position, it's going to look very, it's going to look slightly different, but it's going to do a very different job. Just try and sink your knee forward, encourage it out to the side as well, and then relax. And then for hip, from here, drop your foot a little bit. And go for that standard hip flexor stretch. Reach over across your body. Oh. So from here you've got some hip squeeze. But if your right foot's behind you, take your right arm. Reach it over the top to make sure it's not here. Or just throwing behind you. You're stretching it deliberately over and across your head. It starts increasing the length of the muscles around here. Take and relax. Let me swap. So now we go left quad, right hamstring, left hip. So because they're all very similar positions, you're actually going to get a slight crossover in terms of benefit. Because you're here, you're still going to get a little bit of quad stretch, but not deliberate when you swap over. Michelle says, thanks, my socks, by the way. <laughs> thanks, Michelle. They're the inverse pair to the ones I wore yesterday. <laughs> so it's blue on the left, and then... Okay, swap. So, let your foot drift. And then encourage. So if you move your knee around in space, it's going to hit. So if you have three hamstring muscles it's going to just slightly change the magnitude of the stretch on each individual one. So you'd like, if you're bending your knee and hip, you're going to stretch all three, but they all attach ever so slightly differently. They do slightly different jobs. Okay, so then relax the quad a little bit. And turn this into left hip stretch. Lean across. So that side definitely feels a bit more beat up. So you might, you don't always have to throw in the arm. I'm thinking about certain mobile individuals that can get their knee all the way back and say they don't feel anything. If it starts to feel like it's just doing more of a lat stretch, don't worry about it. You're only doing that here to try and get more of a stretch in your hips. So relax, then you're going to go into lat anyway. So hands over to the side, uh, sorry, hips to the one side, hands follow, and sit yourself away. So you're going to change the emphasis. So rather than how we used to do it, where you lean down and pull your hands away, set them where you want, then if it feels tight, you can bring them back. It's more aspirational. Then swap over. So shift your hips to the right, plant your hands, and then try and sit your shoulders and your ribs off to the left. So 
So I know I feel this a lot more than Paul Morley. And then relax. And chest stretch. And go. Just trying to do a couple of different things, but just transition seamlessly from one to the other. So a little bit further away. Go closer to the chair, but sit back. Try and twist. So to create that twist, I'm pushing my right hand down. Helps you rotate and swap over. So from a kneeling position, if you know what you're doing, you've got a lot more variety. Because you can replicate that standing stretch if you want. You've got to be aware of what your back's doing. So sit back, push your forearm into the chair. So that key message, if you learn how to apply some force at unusual ranges of motion, it's going to help you develop more stability and strength. So if it feels kind of weak around here, overhead, just support your body a bit. And then try and drive your hand down. You might find your bicep starts to, to fire a lot, and for want of a better term, but if you feel like you're doing that too much, relax, so go softer and gently start pushing that way till your chest starts to uh, contract a bit more and you see if it feels more flexible. Then check out your neck and ankle as you have to. That's getting close. And that'll do. So challenge, you've got sprints, 100 meters, 200 or 300, 90 seconds rest in between each. And then gym program for MPS. With a nays, so you have towel press up, narrow press up, weighted rows the same, and then lateral raise. So for those that uh, everyone knows lateral raise anyway, but whatever weight you're using, out to the side, hold for a bit with a slight bend in your elbow. So don't just jam your hands out to the side like a crucifix. Just the ever so slightly soft, so your wrist is just a little bit in front of your shoulder. It's very subtle, and then towel press up. Same idea as the, as the towel split squat. So, towel over your back with the ends under your hands. Just make sure it's fully around your shoulder blades, so under your shoulder blades. And then push as hard as you can for the whole time. And then try and change it. So get more towel so that you're pushing from like that position that position, and just before the top. And then just make sure that it's full load, sorry, the entire time. So don't push and then gently build it up to max. You've got to go full in, hard as you can, get the most benefit from it. And then narrow push-ups, hands together. We've stopped doing them during the week, but make sure your tempo is slow. So two down, so like start, one, two, three, four, five. It's always slower than what you think it is. I think that covers everything. Challenge, gym session, any questions let us know and give us as much detail, detail as you can when you do let us know what you ended up doing. Because it just helps us answer questions. And when we do go back to training, if you've adapted it slightly because you felt you got more from it, that's fantastic, but we need to know. Uh, especially people that might be doing boxing. There's been a lot of boxing going on, which is awesome. But it's just, again, not my forte. I'd rather be there, so if I'm gonna teach you how to box, I can do it if I'm there. I'm qualified to do like that kind of stuff. But not if I just say on a camera, and people start swinging for the fences. If you've done a lot of that, and then you come back to the water and you maybe have a bit of a shoulder niggle, and we didn't know about all the boxing you did, that's gonna weigh into how this program is written. So it's just, it's about making sure that you can hit the ground running as fast as possible when we go back. That'll do. Thanks for joining in live, everyone. And then from Guildford City to everyone else around the world, have a great day.